Hey friends, this is class number 35 and today we're talking about light. And I am so happy to be back and doing the classes. It was a great experience to read the Book of Mormon through and I focused my energy on that and I did my videos on my thoughts as I just went through. Those are all on my YouTube channel. And um, I mentioned several times, um, I referred to light and I was like, this is coming up on my next class and I like, kept putting off and kept putting off and I'm finally able to sit down and do this class with you. And well, for two reasons, I was, I'm so glad this is so rejuvenating and refreshing to me because when I prepare these classes, I am pouring over these awesome conference talks and then I am searching through the Book of Mormon, wondering you know, searching for applicable scriptures and where do I tie this in? And that's what's so fun is the search, searching the challenge and tying things together is it feeds my soul. It feels so good. So if you need to mix something up in your own study and, um, you know, you're wondering how many different ways you can just read the book of Mormon as is try a search, try coming up with a question and finding the answer or read a conference talk like I do, and then how does this, what does the Book of Mormon say about this? And find it out. And then the second reason I'm so excited today is this topic. This topic is just like my favorite topic. A couple years ago, I did a major in-depth study on light and what light actually is. And um, I, I, I was putting this video off because I wanted to share some of that with you but um, I'm still in the middle of trying to organize those notes. I mean, I had a, a talk that I gave in sacred meeting and then I have additional things. I kept contributing more and more to it. So now it's like there's all this material. I've been, I need to put out a little booklet or something. But uh, it was just amazing what I found and what I studied about what light is and how it is a substance of God. And most of what I found is in the DNC. Is it like DNC 88 or 84? It talks about um, truth, light, intelligence, the glory of God. All of those things are synonyms. And when I realized that, that intelligence doesn't mean smart. It means this matter of like, mm, like and that's what we're going to be talking about today. The matter that you accumulate and it makes you brighter and brighter as your glory expands eventually you will have the same glory as God if you stay on the covenant path and you continue adding to your light. That's what we believe. As God is, man can become. How does he become that? By accumulating light, intelligence. And that is what we're talking about today. So, uh, yeah, hopefully I'll, I'll finish that project. And if you want to talk more about that, I love this stuff. I would love to share more notes with you and hear your notes. But anyway, so let's just dive into this. So before we get to the talk, the talk is called The Light of the Perfect Day by Larry R. Lawrence. And I gotta say, I love this I love this guy, Elder Lawrence. I don't know who he is. I don't remember him speaking in general conference ever, but I've come across a few of his talks. And this guy talks about some good stuff. I like him. So, okay, I just wanted to cover the topic of light real fast, if we look at the index of the Book of Mormon, what are just some things that it tells us about light, okay? The Lord will be a light unto them that hear his words. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Woe unto them that put darkness for light and light for darkness. We're going to be talking about that. And I love this one in 2 Nephi 19 too. The people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. And um, that's a Christmas scripture that's in the Messiah put to music. And it sets up that contrast when we have walked in darkness and we know what it's like to live without the light of God in our hearts. And then you see that great light and you, you grab onto it and you never want to let it go. We're going to be talking more about that next week, a week from today at my event, my Christmas in the Book of Mormon event in Sandy, Utah. Um, Mosiah, Christ is the light and the life of the world. A couple of these, you see how light is a synonym with Christ or with God. And I just explained why that is. Um, great cause of rejoicing because of the light of Christ unto light. It causes great rejoicing. Let your light so shine that men might see your good works. 
And Moroni 719. Oh, we're going to talk about this one. Search diligently in the light of Christ that you may know good from evil. Okay, so it's always fun just to do a little skim down the index to get a general idea. Just like, mm, get this gist of, of the essence of the topic, light. <laughs> and then whatever strikes me, whatever goes like, mm, I want to look further into that. Then I look up those scriptures and I find how those apply and I bring them in. And then I'm, you know, I have various topics that I'm going to be covering in the next five or so classes. And then as I do my regular reading, I'm always just like uh, banking, indexing my scriptures that I read and I come across just my regular reading and how does, since things are on my mind, it's all percolating and then I apply it. Okay, anyways. So the talk, the light of the perfect day. Would you be surprised to learn that your success in life depends upon how much light you gain while you're here? Success is not about how much money you make or how much medals you win or how much fame you achieve or I would add or how many years you live in your life. The real objective of our existence is to gain light. That's why we're here is to gain light. Hmm. Really, we, we couldn't gain light in the pre-mortal pre world. We did. We got as much as we could. And then it was time to go away to a different school and learn it in a different way. And this life provides us the opportunity to gain light, largely through adversity, because it's how we respond to adversity that adds more light to our souls. That is not something we kind of, well, we're going to touch on that. We're going to touch on that. We're going to talk about relationships. Uh, but... Um, other than that, that's definitely something I want to go into. I really love the topic of adversity. I love all the lessons that I have learned by going through a lot of crap. Thankful for crap. All right, anyway, our physical bodies grow bigger when we feed them nourishing food. Our spirits grow brighter when we feed them light. We need to feed our spirits light. And there's multiple ways we're going to be talking about. But this brings me to the scripture, Alma 32 35, and we know this chapter is when I almost almost talking about experimenting upon the word and planting a seed. So in verse 35 here, he says, Is this not real? I say unto you, Yes, it is real. Why? Because it is light. And whatsoever is light is good, because it is discernible. Therefore you must know that it is good. And now behold, after you have tasted this light, is your knowledge perfect? And he says, you have to keep building upon that knowledge, build upon that light. And that's what this talk is all about. We continue to progress. We continue to learn line upon line, build, 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 keep going forward, keep learning. But I like how it says it is light. It is good because it's discernible. And maybe I'm making this part up, but to me, that means because it makes sense. So you experiment upon a seed and if you're like, okay, okay, yeah, I'm making some connections and putting that together. This is discernible. And you can almost feel that it's light because like, you know how we talk about epiphany and this light bulb goes off and you feel the light. It makes you excited. You're like, oh, I just discerned something. I just learned something. I gained wisdom, wisdom, light, knowledge. I'm gaining that. That is how you become a God through this discernment of finding what is true and letting it excite you. Um, there's a couple words um, this just reminded me because I was talking about epiphany. Uh, what are the words enlightenment? Enlightenment is about knowledge. So there's a couple words that show us that light is about knowledge. And brilliance is the other one. Brilliance is a word for a measure of light, but it also means knowledge, intelligence. So light and intelligence are the same things. The more we learn both through study of truths and by life experience, will be added to us and bring us more brilliance. We will have a brighter countenance. We will have a more light at the judgment day where we will be judged by the amount of light that we are holding in our bodies. This is in the talk here. So we're gonna get there. But let me not get ahead of myself. I'm just really excited, guys. Okay, as we came to earth, Heavenly Father gave us each a parting gift, the light of Christ. And it's almost like it's that starting point. Like, I'm going to give you, it's like the parable of the talents, right? Let me give you your first dollar free, 
And then you, your job is to grow this. And it's the same with light. We all get free light of Christ. And some people have almost dimmed that down to nothing. And they, they're not in touch with their conscience. And they, they hardly have any light at all. And you can see it in their faces. I mean, beautiful people don't go to prison. I mean, unless it's fake. <laughs> unless it's Botox. <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, so it's a starting point. We're given that first dollar. And then it's up to us to make it more. It's up to us. Heavenly Father is not just going to keep doling out the light, guys. We need to take our light bulb and turn it brighter and brighter and brighter to show that we want it and we're putting in the effort. We are going to study. We are going to invest ourselves in the gospel and in living a good life because we want to turn our light bulb up brighter and brighter because we are using our agency. We want to become like God. So that's why we are putting in our efforts and investing our, our efforts to do those things. Heavenly Father's greatest desire is that we follow the light we were born with so that we can receive more light. As we continue to follow the light our Father sheds on us, we receive more light until we become like Him. So I have covered that already, but the scripture I have here is 3 Nephi 12, verse 8. Is this right? Blessed are all the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now, I just made this connection as I was just flipping through my scriptures and I saw the Beatitudes. Blessed are the pure in heart. If something is pure, that means the light's going through it. It has light. Nothing is blocking the light. So our goal in order to see God, or we can expand that, not just see God, but to live with him, to be exalted by his side in the celestial kingdom together. If that is our goal, we need to be pure in heart. We need to remove anything from us that is blocking the light. What sort of things block the light? Uh, speaking from experience, heartaches and despair and other trapped emotions block the light. It is very difficult to learn lessons in life if we have a hard heart. It's very difficult to discern, to see that light and piece things together and have those epiphanies when we have a hard heart and there are emotions and traumas that we are holding on to. We are holding grudges. We are nursing our old wounds rather than giving them to Christ and letting him heal us. And when we are unhealed, then we are not pure in heart. And, and there's something there. There's a grittiness, a filthiness that is blocking this cup, this glass, so that the light cannot come through and it is not pure. It is not pure in heart. I hope you follow that. Sometimes my brain goes a little, a little <laughs> out of the box. Okay, the gift of the Holy Ghost, in addition to the light we were born with, gives us a great advantage. It is one of the greatest gifts we can receive in mortality because it brings more opportunities for obtaining light and truth. Now this part of the article really got me thinking like we've talked about in church how we have advantages of having the gift of the Holy Ghost because we can call upon him at any time and there's comfort and there's direction and there's wisdom. Yeah, we've heard that. But this says it gives us more opportunities for obtaining light and truth. Why is that? Please share with me what you think, okay? I don't have all the answers. I want to hear what you guys think. I wish we could just be sitting around on my living room sofas having this discussion. Maybe we'll get to that point. That's why I'm trying to hold these in-person events so we can interact with each other and just really feel with each other. Um, so how? How does the Holy Ghost bring more opportunities for obtaining light and truth? One is that we might recognize them as opportunities. A lot of times, I mean, the opportunities are out there all the time. Maybe a book is sitting on your shelf and it contains so much beautiful knowledge and you just don't feel that pull to it until the Spirit calls you and says, you should read that book that's sitting on the shelf. It's been sitting there for 10 years and it has a lot of great juice in it. Are we reading good books, guys? We need to immerse ourselves out of the best books. What's that scripture? It's in the DNC. Out of the best books, you shall learn wisdom and knowledge. This is a quote from um, President Hinckley. Educate your minds. Get all the education you can. There is an essence of the divine in the improvement of the mind. 
Ooh, I love that, guys. I am on this really, I'm on the spree, reading books, and I talk about them on Facebook, I do videos, I wanna sum them up for you, I, wanna sh I just share my epiphanies and anything I'm learning, I love to just talk about it. I've made some great friends and I don't even know them in person, but we share our insights, we read books together, and it is really fun. I mean, I just feel like my life is enriched. I feel that light coming to me. Okay, so recognizing opportunities, being drawn to great materials and sources for obtaining light and truth. And then I feel like the Holy Ghost leads us in critical thinking, like questioning the perceived truths, questioning the norms of society. And the Holy Ghost will lead me to say, is that actually true? And then I think through that, I think about how it relates to the gospel and recognizing that philosophies of men mingled with scripture, they, that's not necessarily true. It's not true. And we take it as truth because it's taught in schools or because it's just widely accepted, it's preached on the media, that doesn't mean it's true. And the Holy Ghost will lead you to think critically and to pick out what is true and to discard the rest, to have that discernment that Alma 32, 35 talks about. Discern what is light, what is good, and be able to discard the rest or else it's gonna trip you up. You have to discard the rest. And then number four, the Holy Ghost gives you an appetite for more spiritual learning. Like I was just talking to my friend today, uh, Katie, who's watching this video, I'm sure she she says, um, I, I used to see people who read a lot of church books and say, how nerdy is that? And then she's like, and now my soul just craves it. I, I want to read nothing but church books. <laughs> and I think that is the Holy Ghost. And if you don't feel that way, that doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It's just we're all at a different point in our journey. And the Holy Ghost will lead you to various various other things that will add light and knowledge to you, Okay. There is someone in my life who gets a lot of light and knowledge out of watching movies. And every movie gives him a lesson and he learns about himself and it is bringing him closer to the savior by watching movies, okay? So it doesn't have to be church books. Whatever you feel drawn to and whatever like turns on that light bulb and makes you excited and gives you those epiphanies and teaches you wisdom, and gives you life lessons. That is the light that the Holy Ghost is bringing to your life. So recognize that, be thankful for it, and make use of it on a regular basis. Okay, Mormon 719. Wherefore I beseech of you, brethren, that if you should search diligently in the light of Christ, ye may know good from evil, and if you will lay hold upon every good thing and condemn it not, ye certainly will be a child of Christ. You will be pure in heart, and you will see Christ. So lay up hold upon every good thing, all sorts of spiritual learning, all sorts of great books. What are you using your time on in life? And is it bringing light to your soul? Or are you just kind of wasting some time away? Are you fiddling around with meaningless entertainment or meaningless socializing that's not bringing you light and truth? Okay. I want you to think about searching diligently from the light of Christ, knowing good from evil, lay hold upon every good thing and condemn it not. You know what's funny is as I learn further lessons and I gain further like knowledge, sometimes other members of the church, they look at what I'm doing and they condemn it and they say, well, that's stupid <laughs> or like whatever. They don't recognize it. They don't have the eyes to see. They don't recognize it as a thing of good, a thing of Christ. We need to pray to have our eyes open that we can recognize what is of Christ and we can continue to learn of Christ in any shape or form. Okay, I don't know why this is the third time that this idea is coming to me. That I'm supposed <laughs> This book is sitting here. Uh, the Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. This is a total secular book and I just read this a few weeks ago. And wow, there's so many gospel principles and parallels being taught in this book. Look how big this book is. You could read this in one day. Well, you have to be pretty smart because there's some difficult language, but you can get the abridged version. Uh, anyways, wow, I'm, I'm gonna do a Facebook video, okay? I'm, I'm gonna teach about this book in a Facebook video. But this is just one example, how you take classics written by you know famous authors. Well, I've never heard of Robert Stevenson before, but I've heard of this book before. Well, we've all heard of Jekyll and Hyde, guys. So you take these classics that we've all heard of and you read the actual book with a highlighter, with a pen, and you find the gospel principles in it and you find how does this apply to me? And it's so rewarding, it's so amazing. All right. 
Moving on, that which is of God is light, and he that receiveth light and continueth in God receiveth more light, and that light groweth brighter and brighter until the perfect day. So this scripture is introducing us to the concept of receiving more, more, more. This is when you're allowed to be greedy. Heavenly Father, that light was so yummy. I want more. More, please, more, please, more, please. And he'll give it to you. He will keep feeding you more. So we also see this in 2 Nephi 28, 29 through 30, and this is going to introduce us to the to the converse, converse principle here. Woe be unto him that shall say, we have received the word of God and we need no more. They're not greedy. They don't want any more. They're not hungering and thirsting. I need more. <laughs> oh, we need no more. We need no more of the word of God. We have enough. For behold, thus saith the Lord God, I will give unto the children of men, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little, and blessed are those who hearken unto my precepts and lend an ear unto my counsel, for they shall learn wisdom. For unto him that receiveth, I will give more. And from them that say, we have enough, from them shall be taken away, even that which they had. So we're going to spend some time here talking more about that. Uh, we're almost there. But we're going to talk more about this principle. You either act on the light you have and receive more, or you say, yeah, that wasn't so special. And he will take away the light that you already had until you're left with next to nothing. And you're that ugly person sitting in prison. <laughs> I, I hope that's not coming across personal to anyone. I, last time I said that, I actually had this pit in my stomach like I said something wrong. Uh, please forgive me if that was you. Um, I want to say that I know some beautiful people that are in prison. Why are they beautiful? Because they have been humbled through their experience and they have come into Christ. Sitting in prison doesn't make you ugly. And it's very possible that you can receive light while still in prison. I just feel like I need to say that because I know I have listeners who have family members in prison. And please forgive me if anything I said came across the wrong way. Okay. Um, this verse is talking back to that one that we read. This is DNC 5024. I better read it again. That which is of God is light, and he that receiveth light and continueth in God receiveth more light. And that light groweth brighter and brighter until the perfect day. This verse perfectly summarizes our purpose on earth. Eternal progress simply means increasing in light. As our spirits become brighter and brighter, we are working toward that perfect day when we can be like God and with God. So, all throughout life, we need to be growing closer to God. We need to be refining our character. We need to be learning more wisdom, gaining more gifts. So I would like you now to consider back 10 years ago, 20 years ago. How have you changed since then? Comment below and let me know. How have you changed in the last 10 to 20 years? Some of you can look back 40 years ago, you know, and what light were you missing that you have now? What lessons have you learned in life? What character traits have you been able to refine? Um, I have some I have some character traits that still need to be refined. And my family sure likes to call me out and tell me all about it. And it's the truth. You know, I'm 35 years old and uh, I still have a road ahead of me. I still have light to gain. I still have ways I need to be refined. I'm not perfect yet. And we all need to be patient with each other and recognizing we're on this path of life in order to be refined and be made like God. So we aren't already like God. Nobody came to earth and we're already like God, guys. Come on. Let's not expect each other to be perfect and to be like God. Just because we profess to be Christians, that doesn't mean that we're, we've already got it made and we've, we've already attained our eternal glory. <laughs> Nobody on this planet, here, look at me. I'm polished. I'm ready for my eternal life, guys. Uh, even the prophet, I mean, he's still learning. He's still attaining more light. Okay, it talks about the endowment session in the temple, how you start in a dimly lit room, and as we increase in knowledge throughout that ceremony, the room becomes brighter. And I actually didn't even notice this until a couple years ago, and someone told me, did you know when we go to the terrestrial room, the lights turn on brighter? And I was like, what? That's so cool. <laughs> Okay, um, it talks about when Joseph Smith met the angel Moroni, he observed that his countenance was like lightning. Imagine the glory, the brilliance, the light that, that shines forth from someone. And that's why, I mean, you see the, the, this famous painting of Joseph Smith having the first vision. He's shielding his eyes. He's like, holy cow, that's a lot of light. <laughs> 
Um, and that's why we need to be transfigured in order to stand in the presence of God. I wonder if the process of being transfigured, by the way, I mean, people who, people who have that experience, and I don't know anyone that they've told me, but I'm, I'm just putting, putting two and two together here. I, I think we are, we are refined of our own impurities and our own, the grit and the filthiness we were talking about in that glass, that's refined out of us. That's a process of transfiguration. That makes us able to withstand the light so that we can meet Christ. So the more light we gain, that opens up the potential and possibility to meet Christ and to stand in his presence while on this mortal planet. That's a possibility, guys. That happens. And we don't talk a whole lot about it, but it's a possibility that, that you can work towards, that you can strive towards, um, not by earning anything, but by being diligent, by keeping your covenants, by attaining more and more light and knowledge. I hope my phone doesn't die on me. Okay. When it comes time for each of us to be resurrected, how will the Lord determine whether we receive a celestial body, a terrestrial body, or a celestial body? The answer is easier than you may think. If we have accumulated enough celestial light in our spirits, we will be resurrected with celestial bodies. If we have accumulated only enough light to qualify for terrestrial or celestial bodies, then that's the glory we will receive in the resurrection. So basically, we will stand at the judgment day and Heavenly Father will look at us and he will see by our countenance how much light we possess. And it'll be like, oh, you're celestial. Oh, you're terrestrial. You're celestial. And uh, I was just reading this in Mormon chapter 9, verse 5. He talks about um, having a nakedness before God. And... I love that idea. I was saying um, on my cover to cover video, I was discussing this for my Mormon video. Um, it, our physical bodies are, are like a shell and our true self is on the inside and we put on this appearance and we're able to hide some of who we really are on the inside because of, because of the nature of our physical bodies. But when we meet God or when we leave this physical body, we're just in spirit. Um, and then I think when we have our when we're resurrected with our new physical bodies, that physical body will be more transparent and our light will shine through. There, Anyways, there will be no hiding. There will be no putting on appearances, okay? We are going to stand naked before God. He will see exactly as we are. There's nothing to hide because our light will be shining through. And this was such an interesting concept. It reminded me of this other talk. I would really like to do a video on this other talk. It's another kind of deep one. And it's called Made Holy in the Body. It's a BYU devotional. And he talks about how, how our physical bodies actually reflect the sin that, that we carry, the holiness that we've achieved. It's not just like, oh, all of my spiritual things are in my spirit and my physical body is separate. He's like, it's all one and the same. And your physical body actually reflects that. And that is such a mind-blowing, awesome concept. But doesn't that explain? Does that explain why the prophet is 94? Is he 94, guys? And he is, he's like spruce, like a 50, 60 year old. It's because his body has become so pure and so radiant because of the light he's accumulated that his body is almost made holy, right? <laughs> so the talk is called Made Holy in Body, I think. Okay, now I want to talk about some people who don't understand this concept of receiving more and more light. They will get baptized, they will get their temple. Or temple ordinances and then they will sit pretty and say all is well in Zion okay I'm doing it I'm doing good I did my part and um, we sometimes we get too comfortable uh, I was visiting with someone who he was a high priest and he shared with me when he was called as a high priest he got too comfortable he thought I'm not that he had it made, but he thought that that calling as a high priest was like, wait, am I saying something wrong? Uh, the high counselor, okay, not just a high priest, but a high counselor. You know, there's only 12 of those in the stake, so it's a pretty high calling. But he was saying that he, he almost took that as a stamp of approval on his righteousness, that he started to let some things slide. And he wasn't studying the scriptures as much. He just thought, oh, I'm a, I'm a high counselor. I don't, I don't need to, because I've already achieved the... the <laughs> the top of the ranks here and uh and he told me how that how that affected him and 
and he suffered due to that. And he learned that he needs to read his scriptures every single day. And you can never get so comfortable that you think you're exempt. And the, I mean, we have talks from the brethren, was it Iring? And then someone else who was talking about um, Bednar and his meekness talk, but we were talking about how the prophet urged them all and gave them a challenge. And I think as President Monson talking about reading the Book of Mormon. But anyways, they went home and they read the Book of Mormon. They didn't say, well, that doesn't apply to me because I have a high rank. You know, they said, okay, I need to keep studying diligently. I have room to grow. Even the brethren, the apostles and the prophet, they have room to grow. Even our prophet, he's our prophet now, but like just six months before he was called as prophet, he was telling us all about how he had made a study of the Book of Mormon and researched all the names of Jesus Christ and highlighted them. And it made him a new man. A 93-year-old telling us that he's a new man. By studying the Book of Mormon, we always have more to learn as we continue to study the Book of Mormon. Sorry, I'm distracted. I'm wondering where my charging cord is. Okay, the scriptures are clear about this. He that repents not from him shall be taken, even the light which he has received. And we talked about that. In other words, while some people are gaining light, others are losing it. Satan can only Satan can take away light whenever we disobey truth. Okay, so I have a number of scriptures on this concept, on the on this concept of losing light, and I am going to cheat and leave the Book of Mormon and go to the DNC real quick. DNC 8454. And your minds in times past have been darkened because of unbelief. And because you have treated lightly the things that you have received. So if we treat things lightly, then the Lord will take away that light that we had. We need to use it. We need to be grateful for it and apply it and be, and don't treat it lightly. Say like, yeah, I love this stuff. And you will receive more and more. So don't, don't make fun of me because I'm all getting excited about the scriptures, guys. That's key. You got to learn how to be excited about the scriptures. Okay, Alma 12, 10 and 11. He that will harden his heart, the same receiveth the lesser portion of the word. And he that will not harden his heart, to him is given the greater portion of the word, until it is given unto him to know the mysteries of God, until he knows them in full. Can you imagine knowing every single thing that God knows? Knowing the mysteries of God in full? And they that will harden their hearts to them is given the lesser portion of the word until they know nothing concerning his mysteries. And then are they taken captive by the devil and led by his will down to destruction. Now this is what is meant by the chains of hell. So it's interesting people leave the church and they literally forget their testimonies. They forget uh, they forget doctrine. They forget how to comp They forget how to interpret and apply doctrine. So they'll hear the same doctrine and they'll just be like, "Well, that's a dumb doctrine or that's a false doctrine." Even though they used to preach it on their missions and they used to totally understand it, but that light was taken from them and they forgot. Third Nephi 26:10. And if it so be that they will not believe these things, then shall the greater things be withheld from them unto their condemnation. So that last part means that we will actually be judged for the light that we, we didn't receive. And of course, there's a, I mean, God is a perfect judge and he will know, did we have a chance to receive that light? Because he only judges you on your knowledge. But this scripture tells you that when greater things are withheld from you, that will be unto your condemnation, meaning that you will be judged on that because God wanted to give them to you. He was ready to give them to you, but you would not receive the greater things. So it will be judged your condemnation. Now Moroni 1, 13, Mormon 1, 13 to 14. Uh, remember this is when the Nephites just were getting so wicked. Wickedness did prevail upon the face of the whole land insomuch that the Lord did take away his beloved disciples and the work of miracles and healing did cease. He took away their light. He took away their miracles because of the iniquity of the people. And there were no gifts from the Lord, and the Holy Ghost did not come upon any because of their wickedness and their unbelief. Can you imagine just losing all of the privilege? You know, what do we say that we, li we live beneath our privilege? 
And I think that totally applies to this lesson. If our privilege is here and that's the light that we can attain in this life and we, we're living here, we need to attain more light until we can live up to the level of our privileges. But how many people, even, even having half of our privilege, we just lose it all and it's gone. And that's the tragedy. That's the tragedy of the Nephite nation. Not that they were physically destroyed, but that they lost their light. And Mormon says they were once a fair and delightsome people. Fair and delightsome. Think about the countenance. They had light. And now they are lost in the ways of darkness. They lost their light. And I, I know this is hitting home for some of you because we, we all have loved ones who this has happened to. And it's very, it's very sobering. It's, it's serious and it's concerning. It's sad, you know, and they can always get their light back. We need to pray for them to have softened hearts. And, and pr I can't tell you what to pray for, but pray what the Spirit tells you to pray for. The Spirit might tell you to pray for them to remember, pray for them to, to feel God's love, because that's always the first bit of light there. Pray for them to get in touch with that light of Christ again and for their conscience to be turned on brighter. I don't know, guys. It's tough. Alma 9, 23. And now behold, I say unto you that if this my people who have received so many blessings from the hand of the Lord should transgress contrary to the light and the knowledge which they do have, I say unto you that if this be the case, if they should fall into transgression, it would be far more tolerable for the Lamanites than for them. And I think the Book of Mormon really does tell us that. This is in Alma 9, this verse, 9, 23, before much of the war chapters. And what do we see in the war chapters? It's the Nephite dissenters who started the wars. It's the Lamanites didn't start wars against the Nephites. The, ne the Lamanites were just pawns. It's the Nephite dissenters, the people who had lost the light. You know that saying, you can leave the church, but you can't leave it alone. The Nephite dissenters who lost the light, they round up the Lamanites, stir them up to, unto anger against the Nephites, use them as pawns and go and attack the Nephites. The Nephites are attacked by their own people who lost the light because here it says, they, it is far more tolerable for the Lamanites than for them. The true bad guys in the Book of Mormon aren't the Lamanites. The bad guys are the Nephite dissenters who lost the light and, and they are in the chains of hell. I mean, that's what that last scripture told us. When you lose the light, that's what it means to be in the chains of hell. Okay, so how do we obtain more light so that it grows brighter and brighter within us? I suggest five ways. Not me. Elder Lawrence suggests five ways. The first one is to love other people. And 3 Nephi 12 tells us about loving our enemies. If any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. Behold, I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you. In my cover-to-cover -cover videos, when I cover these chapters in 3 Nephi 12, I talk at length about those. I tell you my personal experience about how that affected me, so I'm going to skip that for today. But I want to share this quote with you that President Nelson just gave last week at the Christmas devotional. He's talking about the four gifts that Christ gave us. And he says, he gave you and me an unlimited capacity to love. That includes the capacity to love the unlovable. And those who do not, those who only do not love you, but presently persecute and despitefully use you. With the Savior's help, we can learn to love as he loved. It may require a change of heart, most certainly a softening of our hearts, as we are tutored by the Savior how to really take care of each other. My dear brothers and sisters, we can truly minister in the Lord's way as we accept his gift of love. Ask for the Lord's help to love those he needs you to love, including those for whom it is not always easy to feel affection. You may even want to ask God for his angels to walk with you where you presently do not want to tread. I I can't believe he said these words. This was so amazing. He's being so real with us. He's saying, yeah, our Savior asked us to love everyone and loved our enemies. But I understand that's yucky. That's hard. We do not want to tread there. We do not even want to go there, right? And he says, ask God's angels to help you. They will help. Um, they will help you feel affection for those who you can't feel that affection for on your own. 
and um, they will give you this capacity to love the unlovable. That is, that's a perfect quote for Christmas time. I, I, that, I just want to shout that from the rooftops. That's an amazing quote that the prophet gave us. The Christmas devotional. You can find it on the LDS library. Part of loving others is serving others. I mean, you know in Mosiah 2.17 that when you're in the service of your fellow beings, you're only in the service of your God. And I like this quote because he says, the more you serve, the more you love, the more light you receive. And I know we're not supposed to serve for selfish reasons. And I already made my last class all about how we become more prosperous financially the more we serve other people. Science says so. That's why that class was so amazing. So serving really does benefit us. Now we're not supposed to serve for selfish purposes, but that's just the facts. And even here he says, the more light you receive. Serving other people is a way to increase our light and have a brighter countenance and become more like the Savior. Everything we're talking about here. So isn't it interesting that when we're in the service of others, we're only in the service of our God. Well, what's our God's work in glory? It comes back to us. To bring to pass our eternal life. His work and his glory is to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. What's eternal life, guys? It's receiving all the light that God and the Father has. So what this is telling us, when we are in the service of our fellow beings, we are only in the service of our God, and by so doing, we are attaining more and more light until we receive eternal life. That's, well, that's, I can stop the lesson now because that's what this lesson is all about. There you have it. <laughs> the number two thing he said is study the scriptures. There's no shortcut to learning truth. Now remember, intelligence is light. The more you understand the scriptures, the more you learn, the more educated you are, the more light you have. There's no shortcut to learning truth. You have to invest time in reading the scriptures and the teachings of the prophets. If you want to grow spiritually, you have to feed your spirit by feasting on the word every day. According to the doctrine and covenants, truth is just another name for light. Now, if you want my file more on, on increasing our learning, our intelligence, and letting that increase our light, um, ask me, get in touch with me about it. Hopefully, I'll make it soon. I'll, I'll give you what I have so far <laughs> if, you, if you want to study that with me. Before you open your scriptures each day, pray that you will learn something new to add light to your spirit and then search for new insights and understanding. Also, ask yourself, how do these things I am reading apply to my life? You have to be willing to invest time if you want to gain more light. Now, I did my series of cover-to-cover -cover videos as I read the Book of Mormon through. And um, I, I hit the war chapters and I, was, I started praying. I was like, Heavenly Father, please show me how these chapters apply to my life. Please show me the wisdom and the light. What is the doctrine? What is the learning to be gained by reading 20 straight chapters of warfare? surely this is the book of Mormon for a reason can you please enlighten my mind and understanding as I read this and he he taught me he taught me so many lessons and I I got I guys I just can't even tell you I've read the book of Mormon at least 10 times before and as I read this time I highlighted and I highlighted and I highlighted I said I never knew that before I never knew that before whoa that applies to me oh there's a lesson there and like light bulbs were going off right and left even in the book of Mormon in the Book of Mormon when it's just about this whole people it have they've gone down the toilet and they're destroyed I read that book and it it, it just touched my heart uh, what Mormon went through I mean I could just relate to him in a certain way and I needed to know I needed to know that I wasn't the only one I needed to know that a prophet of God can go through those tricky feelings and and difficulties too so there's always something to be gained from those scriptures. Start with a prayer. Ask Heavenly Father to show you how you can apply it to your life. Elder Richard G. Scott said that scriptures are like packets of light that illuminate our minds and that great power can come from memorizing scriptures. Memorize scriptures become a gift you give to yourself, a gift that keeps on giving more and more light. And I, can't, I guess I can't really say from personal experience how I've received more and more light from a memorized scripture. Can anyone else share? Please comment and let me know. Um, so we have to take his word on that. I guess that's something I need to... I mean, I have scripture quotes all on my wall here. My wall is filled with handwritten papers of my favorite scriptures. And I do like to reflect on them and keep kind of munching on my favorite scriptures. Because you can kind of see more out of it and apply it in different ways. Number three was obey the commandments. 
As you discover the commandments in the scriptures, go and do them. When we are taught light, we need to act on that light. And then we will receive greater and greater light. Right? What did this say in DNC? DNC 8454. Your minds have been darkened because you treated lightly the things you've received. So he says here, for example, if you read the divine counsel to retire to thy bed early and arise early, which is in DNC 88124, you had better obey. Do you receive that counsel and treat it lightly? If so, then your light will be taken from you. If you treat it lightly, your light will leave. <laughs> Play on words. Um, if, if you read, thou shalt not speak evil of thy neighbor, then you better watch what you say from now on. As you learn truth, you must apply it to accumulate light. If you gain light but don't use it, you may lose it. We've all heard that before. Use it or lose it. Okay, number four is hearken to the Holy Ghost. Um, when spiritual promptings come, act on them. It's the same concept. If you act on your spiritual promptings, you will receive more. The more and more you act on light, you will receive more light. So remember, act. I want you to remember, act. So a lot of people, they study books and they just put all the information up here and they don't do anything with it. We And it's idle. That's idle information. You're not putting it to use. It needs to be displayed in our, in our personal lives, in our public lives, in our everyday lives. We need to put all of that stuff into action. Number five is serve in the temple. Temple light is even more beneficial to your spirit than sunlight is to your body. I got to quote that. Consider yourself blessed if you are able to bask in this heavenly light on a regular basis. And I mean, I was talking to my husband the other day. I was like, I got to double my temple attendance. I am drowning and I, I have to get that floaty. I have to get that floaty to keep me up. The temple will keep you up, guys. Um, we haven't had enough lessons about the temple and we mentioned it when we were talking about the Isaiah chapters. We had less, uh, talk on the temple. I, maybe that's my own personal challenge to find more scriptures about the temple in the book of Mormon. It's pretty subtle, but they've got to be in there. Anyway, that was sidetracked. Um, that's, that's the lesson. Uh, that's, that's it guys. Um, just, I want to go back to the beginning. Why, why do we care about gathering more and more light? Because we will stand before God and be judged. He will know which kingdom we go to based on how much light we have. And the way to become as he and the Savior are. The way to become exalted beings and realize all of our temple blessings. If you've been sealed in the temple and you have certain promises that you will come forth as, as a certain way. And um, that is going to happen if you receive more and more and more light. Remember, be greedy. Receive all that light. Eat it up. Um, I just bear my testimony that I know this is true. I know we need to be careful about how we spend our time. Be careful of idle pursuits. Do things that will bring greater light and knowledge to you almost every day, guys, on a regular basis. I'm so glad you joined me to watch these videos and to study with me. This is, this is a group of hungry people who are searching for more, more light and knowledge. And it's not enough to go to church on Sundays. We're like, I'm gonna read more. I'm going to invest my personal time in um, studying conference talks and reading the Book of Mormon and thinking about how they apply to me and discussing with other people. What can we glean from this? What does it mean for us? And so I know there's power there. Light is another word for power, right? Electricity. And the more light we have, the more power we will have. The more influence we will have. We can be powerful missionaries. We can be powerful agents for truth and tr change to transform the human race to prepare for the coming of our savior and that's why it's the best thing we can be doing with our time is to be investing ourselves in gaining more and more light thank you so much for joining me i hope share this with your friends and i hope we can continue preaching together again if any of you want to give a lesson you're totally welcome to and on sundays i like to just open up the forum share your testimonies of the book of mormon share the scriptures and how they um how they apply to your life and what you're getting out of your scripture reading we like to hear from everybody so thank you so much everybody have a great weekend bye